It's my very great pleasure tonight to introduce uh, Dr. David Gruen as our first of our speakers. David is the Executive Director of the Microeconomics Group in the Australian Treasury. He joined the Australian Treasury in January of 2003, and before that he was head of the Economic Research Department at the Reserve Bank of Australia. He worked at the Reserve Bank for 13 years in economic analysis and economic research departments. With financial support from a Fulbright postdoctoral fellowship, he was visiting lecturer in the economics department at the Woodrow Wilson School at Princeton University from August 1991 to June 1993. Dr. Gruing is a rare person because he holds two PhD degrees, one in physiology as a scientist from Cambridge University and one in economics from the Australian National University. And before joining the Reserve Bank as an economist, he worked as a research scientist in the Research School of Physical Sciences at the Australian National University in Canberra. It's my very great pleasure to introduce David Gruen and invite him to speak to you tonight. Thanks, John, uh, and thanks everyone for coming along. Um, I've uh, got quite a lot of material to get through today, and um, uh, a lot of slides, which I hope you will find interesting. Uh, I'll try to, I've been asked to speak for 40 minutes, and I'll try my best to keep to time. I won't go too far over, because if I get too um, engaged in what I'm talking about, I'll skip some slides. I was asked to start by um, setting the scene with some longer term trends in the Australian economy, and I think that's quite a good way to, um, to motivate the talk. Most of my talk's going to be about the global financial crisis. But I'm going to start with some long-run trends in the Australian economy. Then I'm going to uh, give you some kind of dot points, which are a summary of the financial crisis as I see it and what, what were the causes. Um, uh, one of the important things about the financial crisis is that something as, uh, as big as this financial crisis didn't have a single cause. An awful lot of things have to go wrong to end up in a mess as big as the mess we, we, the global economy, have got ourselves into. So the list of things that contributed to it is actually a, a longer one than it started out. But every time I thought I'd put everything down that I thought was relevant, I thought of other things and added them. So the, the middle part of the talk is just a, a kind of list or a going through what I think are the important um, uh, features of the crisis and the things that caused it. And then I've got a whole series of slides which uh, hopefully graphically illustrate just how dramatic this, uh, the, the events have been. Um, so that's the, that's the layout of the talk. So starting with the uh, long run trends in the Australian economy, here's a chart which shows you um, economic growth in Australia. So the GDP is the measure that gross domestic product is the measure that's, that economists usually use when they talk about economic growth. And this goes back um, to the mid 70s. And we have had two uh, fairly uh, deep recessions uh, in the early 80s and in the early 90s. And uh, at the end there uh, of the chart, uh, what I'm showing you is Treasury's forecasts, which were published in the budget on the 12th of May. Treasuries and the government's forecasts. Um, uh, and uh, we are forecasting a recession that in some ways is similar to the early 90s recession um, before um, the economy recovers to the sorts of growth rates. We are, we are projecting recovers to the sort of growth rates that we saw coming out of the previous two recessions. Uh, 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 the, one of the uh, perhaps the most the, the worst thing about recessions is that they generate a lot of unemployment, and um, this chart shows you the unemployment rate over roughly the same time period as the previous chart. So uh, uh, unemployment tends to go up very rapidly in uh, in recessions and then come down rather slowly, and that was certainly the pattern in the early 80s recession and again in the early 90s recession. As you can see from this chart, we got the unemployment rate down rather further than we had in, in the previous two re, um, extended recoveries. Uh, and so the unemployment rate got down to a low of about 4%. Um, and it has come up a bit from there. Current unemployment is 5.4. But we are forecasting that it's going to go up a fair bit more over the coming um, months. 
and, um, and our forecasts have it peaking at around 8.5%. So if, one way to think about, uh, uh, people often define recessions as two consecutive quarters of falling GDP. Um, that's a very, that's a common uh, definition, but it's not a particularly helpful one. I think a better definition is a period in which the unemployment rate rises significantly. And by that definition, the early 80s and the early 90s are clearly recessions, and we think that the economy is currently in, in, in is currently in the, in, I guess, the early stages of a recession. So let me just move away from the recession. We'll come back to it um, later on. But just to give you some other kind of long-run trends in the economy, which I think are of, are of interest, here is a chart uh, that I that I like. This shows you where people are employed in the economy. So the the uh, the manufacturing line and the mining and construction line both use the left-hand axis, and the services line uses the right-hand axis. It is a it is a uh, stylized fact about all modern economies that services dominate employment. There are many, many more people employed in services than, that, than in manufacturing. And it is also true that manufacturing is a declining share of most advanced economies, and Australia is no different. So if you go back to the mid-80s, 16% of people were employed in manufacturing. We're down to under 10. And the reason we've put mining and construction together there on the, on the bottom is because there aren't that many people uh, employed in mining. Uh, many, of the, uh, many of the people who are employed uh, uh, building mines or building infrastructure to mines are classified by the Bureau of Statistics as being in the construction sector, so it's useful to put them together. But what is striking, as you can see, is that the mining boom, which, which, was, uh, which really picked up steam about 2003, has led to a situation where there are now more people employed in mining and construction than in manufacturing. Uh, and as you can see, uh, um, the number of people employed in manufacturing in the mid-80s was double the number of people employed in mining and construction. So that's been quite a big change in the state of the economy, but the bigger change is that, uh, is that three quarters of the people in the economy work in services, not, not in, uh, in these primary, um, primary parts of the economy. Um, moving on, uh, as you would probably be aware, the participation rate for those people who don't know, is the proportion of people aged 15 and over who are either in work or looking for work. So they're in the workforce, either in work or looking for work. And there's been a gradual trend decline in male participation. Uh, that's largely a phenomenon to do with the ageing of the population, but also to do with the fact that, um, my, that men tend to retire earlier than they did 20 years ago. But the other very striking pattern is the, uh, is the very substantial increase in female participation. Will those two lines ever meet? Uh, who knows? Possibly, uh, but not for a while, as you can see. Um, turning to the, uh, I've got one more on employment, which is the uh, increasing share of the workforce that's part-time. So if you go back, uh, so if you look over this period, which is sort of late 70s to now, a 30-year period, the share of the population doing part-time work has roughly doubled from about 15% to about 30. 